If there's one thing that Kickstarter's taught us, it's that most people are willing to throw ridiculous amounts of money at an up-and-coming project as long as someone who used to work in the retro games industry is the one heading it. Even if he was just an artist and then a glorified delegation expert. And yes, we are indeed talking about the abomination that was Mighty No. 9's development. After suffering a couple of delays, an entire new Kickstarter project before the first had finished, and then the cherry on top of several other cherries, physical game boxes that aren't even capable of holding their manuals, Keiji Inafune has proven that it takes more than a fake set of credentials to make a solid Mega Man game. Now this was obviously a pretty big hit for anyone who was interested in seeing this style of game continue. I mean, with Capcom just sitting on the Mega Man property, we could very well spend the next several years without a new entry. But what if I told you there was a worthy successor to the Mega Man throne that released a full two years before Mighty No. 9 ever had a chance to ruin anyone's life? Azure Striker Gunvolt hit the 3DS eShop in 2014, and even though I'd see some reviewers really impressed by it, I just never thought to try it out. Well, fast forward three years to the day, and I found it in my Steam library, and for the life of me, I still don't know how it got in there. I'm thinking it must have been part of some bundle that I bought, but that's not really important. What is important is the fact that Gunvolt may as well be the lost Mega Man game that we never got. All the skill-based platforming, the eccentric bosses with their recognizable patterns, the upgrades and power-ups, they're all here, and I gotta say, I didn't know how bad I missed the classic Mega Man formula until I played a game that emulated it so perfectly. Now, I know I have more than a couple of skeptics in the audience. Maybe some die-hard Blue Bomber fans questioning whether or not it's possible for this style of game to even exist outside the team that created it, and I'm right there with you. Luckily, the developers responsible for all this nostalgia, NT Creates, are made up of ex-90s era Capcom staff who just so happened to work on the Mega Man games. Oh, and also I found out they did a lot of work on Mighty No. 9, so either KJ Nafune is the most inept producer ever, or this team is the textbook definition of hit or miss. Either way, we got a great game out of the deal. In the game, you play the titular Gunvolt in a world where certain people have begun to develop superhuman abilities. Our main character Gunvolt is one of these adepts, and works as a type of maverick, <clears throat> I mean, bounty hunter. Your main job is focused mostly on tripping up a corrupt mega corporation whose goal is to utilize the power of the adepts to fuel some type of world domination goals. Of course, things aren't that cut and dry though. There are several factions involved that range from dark and mysterious to relatively well-intentioned. Even from that short description, you can probably tell that this is a much more story-driven affair, and in that sense, it feels a lot like the Zero Series Mega Man games, which I like. This might just be me, but running, jumping, and blasting away enemies always feels more rewarding when you know you can trade banter with an anime guy in mecha armor, or a gender-fluid sexual predator with a dick horn? Well, dick horns aside, this is some classic run-and-gun goodness. You have your typical shoot, dash, and jump buttons, but with some added complexity. Healing and offensive skills, alterations to your main weapon and equipment can be obtained, but the main gimmick to find here is Gunvolt's electric powers. A normal shot will tag enemies, and using this electric field will home in and do some serious damage. This move also slows down falling speed, and often comes in handy when interacting with the environment. It's a pretty small addition, but you'd be surprised how much this spices up gameplay. Overall, Gunvolt is a good bit more complex than its forefather, but still feels true to that old style. As far as visuals go, I'm sure you've noticed the somewhat odd resolution. Starting its life as a 3DS eShop title, Gunvolt looks extraordinarily good for an upscaled sprite-based game. The aspect ratio is a bit more narrow than your typical 16x9 monitor, but a few pixels on each side isn't going to kill anyone. Sprites and other 2D assets made the jump to HD really well. In fact, this almost looks like the upscaling my FrameMeister is capable of. Instead of going the up route, the text in the dialogue windows has been redrawn and keeps that italicized look it had before, but the higher-res font next to the low-res character portraits does clash a bit. 
I will say the 30 FPS cap is a little hard to deal with and a little ridiculous for a 2D game on PC, but since the game was originally built around this constraint, I can see how changing it would lead to retooling the entire experience. Overall, this has been an absolute blast to play through, and I just don't hear people talking about it enough when complaining about how disappointed they were in Mighty No. 9. It's a great looking and playing 16-bit skill test, and at $14.99 on Steam, I really can't think of a better way to wash that bland taste out of your mouth. And speaking of bland, it's also out on the Switch, so all you Switch owners make sure to give it a look in between preschool and diaper changes. Azure Striker Gunvolt may be a great amalgamation of old school Mega Man and new school gameplay trends, but more than anything, it holds a place as a certified trash classic.